Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Hope you're all doing well. In this video, we're continuing on this awesome guitar kit from Precision Guitar Kits. Uh, I got this thing dyed in the last video. I showed you guys how I got this effect on the front. And then I went ahead off camera and did the same thing on the headstock. We've left kind of a natural binding look around the outside of both the headstock and the body. The body has a thick maple cap on it. This thing is just gorgeous. Got it all glued up. It's looking great. Uh, the headstock also has a maple cap on it, although much smaller, about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe a little bit thicker. Um, and so, yeah, we got that done. And in this video, we're getting this ready for the paint. Uh, we're going to be using a couple different things here. So first off, you can see, I think, I can't see what you can see, but you can see that there's some shine on a few areas of this. What's going on there is I green filled this. And you'll see the video of this. I taped off the edges. I think it got interrupted a little bit, the video. But anyway, I taped off the edges and then I grain filled it with Ecopoxy liquid plastic. This is the two to one. Um, extremely vers versatile stuff. This is casting epoxy. So, you know, you could carve a huge gouge in this or even create a block and, cr and create the block for the guitar out of this because it's, it dries thick enough. You can do a thick enough cast with it. But it's also awesome for grain filling and it doesn't take much easy to sand, easy to push in there, and importantly, perfectly clear. So I've done the grain fill on this after dyeing it, and you can see all I've managed to do is, other than fill, is accent the effect on the grain, which is perfect. That's what I'm looking for. It's going to be perfectly compatible with my, my next steps as well. So really happy with that. That's grain filled now. This is 72 hour epoxy, so 24 hours to be dry to the touch, 72 hours to cure. I did this about 18 hours ago and that's why most of it is dry to the touch at this point but a couple areas where it's a slight bit thicker are still wet now I'm, I'm taking a close look at this now and this is what I would recommend that you do in these circumstances and I'm checking if any areas have any excess buildup that I now want to take off but it looks good to me it looks like they're all going to dry nice and in the grain and I'm only going to have minimal sanding to do for the next step so I do need to let this cure for another two days basically that's the safe way of doing this and then I can sand it it's just the top that I did I can sand that and get it ready for our next steps I filmed that so you'll see that in a second next up what we're going to do is go ahead and seal all of this we're going to use the sanding sealer from Mohawk and then I'm going to start on a little bit of color work so we'll get the sanding sealer done in this video obviously the green filler done in this video and then in the next one We'll start on the little bit of color work that we're going to be doing on this guy. There isn't much. And then it'll be clear coat time. This is not going to take long, this kit. Um, one of the nice things about Precision Guitar Kits is the kit comes to you basically ready to go. So not a lot of work to do on it. A little bit of sanding left and some coating work. And that's it. It'll be finished and ready for some assembly. All right, let's get after it.
All right, so you guys get the idea here. I put on the epoxy. I don't put much on, and then I use a squeegee and I spread it out. And then I actually go back afterward, as you'll see me do here, and you just saw me do with the entire body, and I remove all the excess. So the idea here is we want to use the squeegee to kind of push that down into the grain if we can. You can use a rubber glove too or something like that, but I find this to be very effective. We spread it around, make sure we're not missing anything, push it into the grain, and then remove the excess. So it doesn't take much because we're moving it all around. Um, it doesn't dry really quickly like super glue, which is another option for this kind of effect. So it gives us more time to work with it, although it's a little bit slower in terms of the overall process. Uh, it also doesn't have the crazy fumes that super glue has. So they're good for, you know, super glue is good for what it's good for, but this stuff is really nice for grain filling when you're using a fair bit of it like this, because you don't have to worry about your eyes burning after if you don't have the right kind of goggles. Actually, it looks pretty good like that too. Like it really, it really leaves you tempted to go in and do a thicker coat as a finish after this is dry. Like let this dry, sand it, and then do a thicker finish coat of the epoxy. That's not what I do here. I let it dry for 72 hours like we talked about in the kind of preamble there. You saw it before this sanding stage. I've got a lot of amber sanding dust on my pants. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then I come back and sand it. I'm doing that with, I think, 320 grit. If not, it might be 400, but it should probably be 320. And then it's going to be ready for me to go ahead and do my sealer on it. So grain fill first, then sealer. Now you can, of course, grain fill the entire thing. I'm using Mohawk's Easy Vinyl Sealer, which is, you know, it's got some filling capabilities, but I'm, I'm not grain filling anything other than the top. So the top of the headstock and the top of the body, because I've got this black limba body and I want a little bit of an open grain finish on everything except the top. The top's going to be a nice hard gloss. And the rest of this is going to be a little bit of an open pour, hard wax oil type finish when all is said and done. Although I am going to lacquer the whole thing. Now you guys have heard me extol the virtues of this Mohawk vinyl sealer before and I'm going to do it again. It is really nice. I really like this stuff. It builds up quick. It dries fast. It goes on smooth. The cans are high quality. It's just a good a good finishing product in my opinion and I, I like using it. And I like using it out of the quartz as well. But this is one where the spray cans work, you know, as well as anything pretty much. You can fire on more material at once if you're using a gun, but you don't really need to. The spray cans have, you know, a nice high material flow rate and they get the job done this just fine, especially for a sealer. So I often resort to the cans just because they're easier. I don't have to set them up and everything. Um, I do use the spray gun occasionally, but I'm going to do this whole job basically with the cans, because I think, uh, you know, it's a DIY channel. I'm trying to show you guys how you can do this. Not all of you have paint guns. Some of you do. Those of you who do, uh, I got lots of videos on those as well, but you may not even need my help. Maybe you know what you're doing with those already. The spray cans, hey, might as well uh, watch how it's done with those. So we're going to go through a couple coats here. These are in real time. I haven't sped up this part. I did speed up a lot of the video before this. You'll see I have the guitar hung in front of a spray booth. Spray booth is a nice touch if you have access to something that can pull fumes uh, and that isn't going to explode from those fumes, nothing with a spark, then excellent. Uh, you'll also see I'm wearing a mask. This stuff's not good for you. I'm sure that comes as no surprise. In terms of the rest of the setup, I've got the guitar hung, of course, and I'm trying to follow my own rules about an even coat of paint. So this is the same way I paint guitars like this all the time. I do the edges first. I do a 50% overlap on my paint stroke as I go over the front and back, and I try and do the length of the neck and do a 50% paint stroke there as well. Now sometimes the edges take a couple passes. So you'll see me do two or three passes to make sure I've got, and I just mean quick passes with the can like this, to make sure I've got a nice even coat. I did the first coat a little lighter. My second one can be slightly heavier with this sealer. Um, and yeah, I'm just making sure that that on the edges I've got a, a reasonable coat there. I don't want to have to do a bunch of sanding and smoothing things out on the edges, but that's rarely required. So a lot of people ask me how I sand and polish the edges of the guitar. I mean, the, the real answer is usually I don't have to, or I don't have to do much. Um, but when I do, uh, the other answer is the slow way, by hand, and it takes forever. So the less you need to do on those, the better. Front and back are, of course, a lot easier to work with. Here, again, this is in, in real-time speed. 
You can see how I'm approaching this. I'm doing quick passes, but I'm doing them quick because I'm quite close to the surface when I do it, and I'm overlapping that stroke, like I said, 50%. So the pattern on the, the can, the spray pattern, I move down half of that pattern every time. Now, if I were going a little slower, I would simply hold the can a little further away from the surface, and I'd be able to get a similar result. I did a full video, it's very, very old, probably 9, 10 years old by the time I'm doing this one, but I did a full video on how to get an even coat of paint with spray cans that although it's old and isn't the greatest quality, I think it really demonstrates the proper technique. So if you haven't seen that and you're wondering anything about why I'm doing it this way and how to get an even coat of paint with spray cans, take a look at that. It is easier with these nice cans than it was with the ones I used in that video, but that's just fine. I mean, the principle applies the same. I'm doing the same thing on the headstock. You can see I'm doing back and forth, overlapping 50%. You can do that up and down or laterally like I've done it. doesn't really matter as long as you're getting that overlap. Now, you do want to be careful, especially on a hanging guitar, a vertical surface, not to get any runs. And so a little bit of a practice piece to make sure you've got a sense of how fast that material comes out how it overlaps and how it sticks to itself is a good idea. And then I hold the can upside down and spray until I just get the, the gasp and that is clearing the nozzle. So here's what we've got with the uh, sealer. First couple coats of sealer on. I think that's looking pretty good. Pretty shiny. Uh, this stuff dries to a duller sheen. It is a sealer after all, not a gloss clear coat. So that's how it looks still wet, but it'll dry out a little bit more matte than that. And then once it's dry, I'm going to wait one day. Basically, I've sprayed this. I'm going to come back the next day, and I'm going to sand it. And this time, I'm going to sand it with 400 grit uh, by hand a lot in those kind of edge areas. But I'm going to sand this by 400 grit. with 400 grit. I'm going to use a sanding block where I can. I'm going to use my hands where I can't. And then we're going to go ahead and spray some sealer on it again. So I've already talked about all the spraying technique stuff. You guys all know how to sand. And, uh, and really, that's what we need to talk about from an information perspective on this video. We're going to come back in the next one, and we're going to do some color. We're going to do an amber. Okay, So we'll do an amber coat over all of this. Some of you will like it because it adds some more color. Um, some of you will dislike it because it obscures some of the contrast in the top. And I know some of you are wondering, you know, why didn't you do a black underneath the green? Because that gives it a higher contrast. Well, that's simply not what I was going for on this one. Uh, it does give it a higher contrast. It gets rid of some of the chatoyance, which you may or may not want. Uh, this is what I was looking for, so this is what I did. And I add some amber on top of this, and I hope you guys like it. On that note, I also hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. You can watch right to the end here, but I'm going to switch to some music so you don't have to keep listening to me talk. Remember to subscribe so you can see how this series turns out. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one, and I will see you guys next time. Enjoy the rest of the video. Catch you later.